everyone for taking time and joining the session for today and thank you the poor community organizations uh, uh, the organizers for uh, like for conducting for organizing this particular event for uh, for three days it's not so easy to organize the event for for, for the three days continuously right uh, so kudos to you guys so coming to myself i have uh, 11 years of experience completely into dynamics 365 space uh, and i am an ex, ex microsoft currently working in a company called print solutions india and today my topic is uh, uh, storage and the dataverse so first of all i'll i'll discuss about the storage and then i'll jump on to the dataverse topics so what is storage right uh, like before at least when we were working in 2011 2013 and 2015 2016 instances the storage was always one box one full db there was no segregation at all uh, i still remember we at least we used to write a lot of custom solutions to move the attachments from uh, from the from the dynamics 365 database to the blob or maybe so the, like couple of solutions we have written to move the attachments to the sharepoint as well the main reason for doing all those things to just to save the storage space and storage capacity so that we don't really put a lot of amount to just to buy the file space so somewhere somehow microsoft heard all our pain points in moving the, the files or attachments moving from dynamics 365 database to the blob using a custom solution in fact microsoft itself has released one solution by microsoft lab saying attachment management solution however they have deprecated that now so the reason behind the deprecation Microsoft itself has given a like wonderful opportunity in segregating the 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 capacities based on the database file and log. Now you see then the screen in the in the on the screen here the one uh, whatever you are seeing legacy that was the old one which used to have only one box for everything. Now in the latest instances in the latest environments whatever we 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 entitle we see that the, the categorization has been done here. One is for database. second one is for file and the sec- and the third one is the logs we'll go in detail we'll try to understand what is this database file log and everything so to understand the the, the concepts of this complete uh, like file log and the database the the one thing one place to go is the power platform admin center aka.ms.ppac when you go there you just have to go to the resources and then capacity you will see the screen what exactly i'm i'm showing here so you will see the first one as summary which has all the like nice graphical uh, representation of all the uh, things whatever we use in the capacity wise we'll go in detail of one one chart here the very first thing is regarding the storage capacity usage right as i just i mentioned the microsoft has divided everything into the three boxes now one is file log and database what exactly file contains file contains of attachments or the annotations or any custom table or maybe the system table which has the data type of file or image and the web resources then ribbon client meta database all these things will directly go to the file storage will not be counted as part of the database now so it will be fully for the file storage itself the second one is the log log is we, we all know log log is like only two things from a very very long time always audit and the plugin trace even this thing microsoft has segregated to put it to the other storage capacity that is mentioned as log here the rest of the one is our core database which has all the transactional data or business data or the master data or whatever the application we built uh, based on our uh, like problems and solutions so that's where we come here so these are the three things uh, where uh, like the segregation happened now the next graphical representation on the summary page of that uh, power platform admin center shows the storage capacity by source by source as in the like we, we all know we can always the, the default storage that comes from the dynamics 365 tenant uh, when when we sign up and also there is a license which will which can automatically uh, additional capacity will be given to us when we buy the licenses let's say if we have like i think power up per app license i think 50 mb of the database storage will be given automatically for us per user in the same fashion we have additional storage additional storage as in if we all, all already completed our entitled database storage then if you want to buy something if you buy something that will be counted as additional storage so we in this one particular diagram we'll come to know what kind of like numbers we are using on the particular tenant what kind of numbers we are and we can always make a decision by seeing this one and the next one is 
top storage usage by environment so in in the tenant if you have like multiple uh, multiple environments which environment is taking a lot of space we'll try to understand with this by this uh, particular screenshot or sorry by this particular graphical representation we'll understand which instance is really really taking the capacity obviously production would be the one and the rest of the instances it will show here based on this we can always take an action to reduce or maybe what, what exactly is the reason behind the space here and the next one is about the add-ons uh, if if we have any add-ons enabled on our so, uh, tenant let's say we have app passes right like the power app or app licenses if you have in the system then it, this is a place where it shows how many passes have been given for us and how many passes have been utilized so that's the one which we can easily see here so we don't have to like go anywhere apart from the power platform admin center with the new graphical representation next thing uh, under after summary we have something as data uh, so something as dataverse which will show us the 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 instance level the environment level the usage of all the all the capacities like what kind of usage we have for the database file log and everything is shown here so if you can just click on that one small arrow mark which is is highlighted over there it will automatically route to the page where we can try to understand on that particular instance what exactly the the space is is uh, so what exactly we have let's say the first one the first 1 gb of space whatever we are seeing here it shows the actual database usage and the top database tables and the their growth over time so we see the chart here so from 1 14 2021 to 2 10 2021 it clearly shows the uh, the kind of like growth over time here and the next below uh, diagram uh, will will show us the file usage and the top file tables and growth over time again so we'll try to, we can we can easily understand where exactly the growth is happening and so the three lines whatever you see here this particular three lines if you click on the three lines we have three options over there one we can we can see the particular graph in a full screen because this particular the graph is little smaller if you want to really analyze that if you just click on that it will automatically open in a full screen which will help us to understand the the growth timeline and the other one we have is the download pmg we can always download the the screenshot of this particular graphical representation and we can use for our analytic purpose the third one is the, the the download csv which will help us to download the the sizes of each table in the in the particular instance for example let's say so this is what i have downloaded from one of my instances so when i download it shows all these tables with the sizes here so this is pretty cool we understand the the complete information which table has more size so by this we can always take the take the actions to reduce or maybe to analyze our solution so the the next one which i have i think in the, in the last call someone was asking like uh, what was the cost for each 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 capacity like the database and the file and the and service log right so here we do here we go right if you go to the microsoft 365 uh, admin center if you are a microsoft 365 global or billing admin you can always navigate to this particular uh, link my microsoft 365 admin center you go to the billing and then purchase services just search for capacity you will see this particular one so here you you can automatically see that the file capacity is two dollars per month and the, the and the the log is ten dollars per month and the database is forty dollars. Now if you see this one, so this is the the so this is what we want. Like previously we used to pay like I think fifty five dollars or forty dollars. I don't really remember, but that was the amount which we used to pay pay for files as well as logs. Now, due to this segregation, which was done by Microsoft, we are just paying two dollars per month per GB for uh, for files, and the same ten dollars per month for logs. So this is what we are saving a lot of cost here, a lot of money we are saving for an organization. So data storage is pooled uh, again. We all know, right? I just I just mentioned. So we don't need to buy this this storage whenever we are done. But data storage is again pooled between the licensed users. So, so you you can allocate the storage as needed for each solution that we can build, and additional storage can be purchased if you need more storage. Then this is what offered by the standard licensing. What are the benefits of a new storage? So, if you buy the if you go with a new storage, what are the benefits? As I just mentioned, the very first thing is the cost. You will save a lot of money with the cost, and now the the solution, the, the Dynamics 365 or the Dataverse systems are really open to build storage management solutions. Previously, it was not the case. Now, having said the file storage is just two dollars 
per month we have the, uh, the we have opened the, the solution for that in the same way we can always the the, the storage will enable the uh, like new business scenarios and also flexibility to create new instances now uh, so which will be counted for the for the consumption so default production sandbox environments are counted for the consumption as we have trial preview support and developer and environments are not at all counted for the consumption so only four type of instances are counted for the consumption purpose now let's see the scenarios here when we say that storage capacity and all those things when we really see that when we really say it's a over capacity now here if you see the database end title was 100 gb and the consumed was 110 log 10 gb end title and 5 gb consumed file 400 gb end title and 200 gb consumed so this clearly shows that that this tenant is 10 gb over in the database usage now it's time to buy a space or maybe free up some space right and the next one this is about the log stress now if you see the the database is 100 gb end title and consumed is 95 the log is still uh, like 10 gb end title and 20 gb we have consumed that means this tenant is 10 gb over in the log usage and has only 5 gb available in the database capacity so whenever we see this type of things we have to understand it's 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 it it's not only to buy the log space here because the database size is also 95 gb we have to understand whether to buy the database size or maybe we have to free up some storage here in the same fashion we do have the file uh, storage is over capacity by this particular scenario here the file end title was 200 gb but consumed was 290 now we have to understand 90 gb over in the file usage so we have to buy that space again so these are all the like the, the these scenarios which we encounter when we see database file and log which will be easily understandable by the summary whatever i have shown you from the admin center now like what will happen if the storage capacity is exceeding or exceeded if the storage capacity is exceeding microsoft has recently the, uh, given this three notification for us whenever there is a less 50 per 15 percent space available on your tenant Uh, it will send an email to the tenant admin saying, "Okay, this, there is only 15% space available, and you have to take an action." So that's what an email uh, they send. In the same fashion, uh, we have like uh, less than 5% space available. Again, they send one more notification, and after that, they send a notification when the real user storage exceeds the capacity entitlement. So these are the three notifications which were introduced recently by Microsoft to make the tenant admins on the storage capacity. so if the storage capacity is exceeded like like if like we we all know that how how data is important for all the business and obviously it is very uh, very uh, easy scenario to always uh, the storage capacity might get exceeded what will happen if the storage capacity exceeds if the storage capacity exceeds we can't really do all these operations we can't do the copy and instance or copy and environment restore and uh, we can't restore an environment so creating a new instance will not happen converting a trial instance to paid instance will not happen and if you want to recover something so some instance that is also not happening and adding a database database to an instance will not happen so all these things will be blocked and users will have to buy a space or maybe they have to free up some space to move on uh, from these scenarios so let's take an example for example if the entire tile space is 100 gb and if the user if we have already used 150 gb of the database then what will happen so it the, the the system will automatically stop you when we are doing any of these operations or maybe when we are whenever there is a renewal license the system will ask you first to buy a space and then go for the licensing renewal so it will stop you there as well so they know where to stop that's where they are doing however we have a little bit of temporary extension which we can get because let's say if you are in production there is a some fraud issue which is running microsoft can't say that okay you are out of space and we can't do anything no that so that's not the case microsoft has given a temporary extension if our capacity has been over uh, than than the entitled so it will give an option whenever we want to copy and and uh, an instance for to to reproduce some issue or maybe to to for the support ticket we all know whenever we create a support ticket the very first thing the people ask is to copy the instance so that they can reproduce the issue from their side and try to understand that so that will not be blocked they have an extension request if you sign in as a tenant admin in the power platform admin center select an instance and select a copy on top of the uh, menu bar then uh, i think you have to fill couple of options over there once you fill that the copy uh, uh, environment page will appear like this where you can select the request for an extension 
so this will help us to to automatically request for an extension for a couple of days so that you can always take some time to buy a space or maybe free up some space so extension request so we as as i mentioned the extension request again comes with couple of limitations here extension request is at always at the tenant level it does not allow you to create a new instance it allows you to only copy the instance you and our organization can request an extension only once so we can't really uh, every time we can't go for a request an extension here we can do only one time after the one time extension extension copying and restoring environments will 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 be again blocked get we have to buy the storage or maybe we have to free up the space so those are the options which we have now i was talking about this freeing up a space and everything right what kind of mechanisms we have to free up the space let's see a couple of them on that so as i mentioned for to to free up the storage space on the database we have six recommended mechanisms without impacting any of the data in the system the very first thing is delete workflow instances using a bulk deletion job you just have to create a bulk release job where just where job type equal to workflow instance and the status reason is succeeded then you schedule a job to run for every 30 days then you are done so obviously the, 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 maybe uh, this particular workflow instances will be very very minimal because as per microsoft recommendation we always check the check box while creating a workflow itself saying automatically delete the workflow instances when the workflow is successful so by mistake if someone uncheck the check box the workflow instances will be created in the system so this bulk deletion job will help us to delete those things and save some space for us next thing is evaluate and delete suspended workflows so this is little critical thing suspended workflows are nothing but the workflows which are failed after waiting so let's say uh, we are running the workflow uh, based on some admin user so some user and for that some user we have not given the right privilege that means the workflow will go into waiting space waiting stage thinking the the it, it will the waiting stage it will fail automatically so these are type of things we can't really uh, delete the things from using a bulk deletion job because we have to analyze because this will have the business impact if the workflow is in waiting stage for more than a day that means there is something which we have to act so those things we have to understand first Uh, we have to evaluate pro- properly to analyze the data analyze the logic and if everything is good then feel free to delete those things and the third one is remove bulk duplicate detection jobs and associated copies of duplicate detection so this is simple you just have to go to settings data management and uh, go to the duplicate detection job select all and delete so whatever the duplicate detection jobs we ran in the system so those will be deleted because anyway those are ran and we don't need them at all and the fourth one we have is uh, deleting a bulk import instances so we all know like we will be importing a lot of data in the system uh, like whenever we we do something right so we have to again for so this also we can create a bulk the uh, bulk deletion job and select the job type as import and status reason and succeeded and again schedule a job for 30 days so that it automatically takes care of deleting the data whenever it comes and the fifth one is delete bulk deletion job so whenever we do bulk deletion in the system and that will again create a job in the back end so again that will be that the job type would be bulk delete even this can be scheduled using a bulk deletion job then if we do this again uh, as i mentioned every 30 days we can run this one this will also save some space for us the last one remove the columns remove unrequired tables and columns from the relevant set. so if we, we at the time of development we might create lot of tables in the system lot of columns in the system if we really don't want that let, let we can always remove those things we can always delete those things so remove the columns that are not needed for searching and majorly for searching searching impacts a lot so whatever the column if if there is no business requirement to enable the search on that particular column go ahead and remove that because whenever we enable the search on the field that creates index in the system if there are more indexes that takes more db size so indexes are created and optimized uh, for peak performance so and are updated frequently by the system to analyze the data use patterns so that's the reason we have to uh, we we have we have to be careful while sorry i'm sorry just one second yeah, we have to we have to be careful while enabling the the search field for of uh, in, in on the entities so wherever we need we can always enable but wherever we don't need go back and check those things and try to remove those things. so this is all about the six patterns we have to to free up the space from the database the next one is the file file is simple uh, i mean this again the based on the business scenario we have to understand it's not so easy to directly delete the records here 
So we just have to frame the advancement query like this. And what are the results that comes? Like before even deleting, take an approval from the business so that we are deleting the attachments in the system. Obviously, I personally, I don't recommend this one because the file storage is always, it's just $2 per GB. Let the file stay in the system so that at least we have the historical understanding of the data, whatever the emails or attachments that are being sent from the system. And uh, this is also the bulk deletion job, same way, whatever uh, we can do from advanced fine, same bulk deletion job we can create and we can try to like, schedule this one so that the system will automatically delete. But obviously I don't really recommend until unless it is really needed. And the last one uh, on the storage spacing is the file. Uh, like we, like, as I mentioned, file will automatically have the, uh, the removing the nodes from the attachments again, the whatever we just now discussed at once fine and the same fashion, we can always have the bulk deletion job to remove the attachment. The notes is again, the kind of data which we have in the system. So I would not really recommend, but yeah, taking the business permission, we can always do that. Logging, yeah. So logging is a critical thing. Uh, deleted the auditing log, audit logs is again, uh, again, it's not so easy. We have to again, go back to the business. Plugin trace log, it's all, all always like it's, uh, it's always developers data. We can always delete those data, but not, like not very recent data. We can always create a bulk deletion job and delete the data for every 30 days. Obviously Microsoft doesn't really recommend to enable the setting of uh, tracing all the plugin trace logs on the production at least. But by mistake, if you have enabled, feel free to delete those things because we don't need that because the trace log, if you have like, I think one month of trace log, that's, that's well more than enough to understand the traces in the system. So for audit logs, when I was preparing for this session, I have seen this new experience in the Power Platform Admin Center. So we can always delete the logs by table, by access logs, by people systems, and also by the date. So this is what I have seen very recently. This might be very new. At least I have not seen this particular thing. I used to delete the audit logs using a console previously, but this this is one Microsoft has given for us, which will help us to, if you want to directly delete the logs directly by table, we can select the option over there, or maybe access logs by people and system, we can delete from here. And also logs up to the date, we can select the range here, we can select the date, and from the date, if you click on the delete button, it automatically takes care. So that way uh, we can always delete the data from the, from the audit, uh, and like from the auditing as well. So having said, this is all about I have on the storage and the next topic is uh, the next uh, and my next topic is the Dataverse. So what is Dataverse? Is it a Azure SQL or is it a Cosmos DB or something related to the blog? What is that? We'll try to understand that in a little bit in next 20 minutes of time. So before even going to the Dataverse, so let's talk about data for now. So data is the one thing which we know and for what we know, and it is a center for everything. So whatever we build, right? So let's take an example of Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, or maybe Virtual Agent, whatever we, we build on in the Power Platform, data is going to be the center for everything. So that's what we know. So from where does the uh, data comes? Normally, the data comes from the connectors, right? So whatever the connectors we have in the system, that comes from the connectors and sits in the dataverse. And the connectors, the, maybe the, the sources might be SharePoint, Excel, SQL, or maybe we have like, I think 470 plus connectors in the system, which will make use of the, uh, uh, make use and we can bring the data to the system. And also the in-house D365 application, which will have the data. So this, this is the, uh, once we have the data, Dataverse is going to be the backbone for all the things. So the, like backbone as in for power apps, we can take an action so like using the data word, the data inside the data, data words, we can always take an action to using power apps and the virtual agent for chat and power BI to analyze our data. And the power automate is a workflow engine, which we can automate a couple of things. So for me, data words is not just a SQL database. It is a database which has 15 plus years of experience. So that's where it is. It, it knows what to do. It understands our problems. It has a lot of concepts, logic inside. We'll go through in a minute anyway. So in a simple, uh, in a simple example, if I want to cover, tell what is Dataverse. Dataverse is a cloud-based, low-code data service and app platform. It structures a variety of data and business logic to support interconnected applications and available globally, geographically. And the data, whatever we have in the Dataverse, it has, we can always allow us to do the deeper insights. And the, the last thing is it gives us the data infrastructure to enable to enable the business insight that saves a lot of time and cost. We don't have to really invest time and cost to, to get the data infra infrastructure. If we have the Dataverse instance, you already have that. And also it's very easy to manage and secure the data. It can work with any type of data 
and it can integrate with multiple sources using connectors, as I mentioned just now, 470 connectors, and it is maintained by Microsoft. So what is Dataverse designed to do? So what exactly is the reason behind uh, the, the design of, of, the, of this particular Dataverse? So data is a center for everything, uh, for a business to for, for us today and powers insights that can drive what it should do tomorrow. So that's what it is designed for. It is a central data repository for the business data. We can build a number of the NVC 65 solutions. We can, it, it has the connectivity to all power platform components and it meets the enterprise level scalability needs and offers a service level agreement of 99.9% .9 uptime. So that is what Dataverse is designed for. Now, like what kind of data we have? Considering Dataverse in the system, we have two types of data. One is the external Dataverse and uh, external data, and the other one is the internal data. So external data is nothing but outside of Power Platform, and internal data lives within the Power Platform. So how can we get the external data inside data to, to, the, to the Dataverse instance? So we do have connectors. We can always use the connectors uh, to, to get the data from external world to the, to the Power Platform world. So how can we get that? So how many connectors we have? From out of the box itself, we have nearly 470 plus connectors, which are already available in the Power Automate system, which we can always make use of those things and we can automate the things to get the data from external world to the Dataverse system. So what is that internal data Dataverse here? So Dataverse is something which is which is really smart. It has, it, as I mentioned just now, right? I think it's, it's, it's nothing but it's Dataverse is, all, is not just a SQL database. It has, it is a database with 15 years of experience and it meets the enter, enterprise level scalability and offers service level agreement of 99.9% .9 of time. So that's the reason it is very smart. It scales up automatically and data is completely in the secured fashion. So, uh, so what are the apps which we can build uh, using Dataverse? Where exactly we need the connectors, uh, even though we have Dataverse, we need connectors to do something, right? For example, if you are doing something, if you are building some power apps, we, we, we really need a connector for that. Even though we are, we, we can use of the Dataverse, but Dataverse usage should happen using a connector. And the power apps, model driven apps, we don't really need the connectors. We can directly use the Dataverse. Our portals, we don't need data. We don't need the connectors again. We can directly use the data words. Flows, obviously, it is a it is a complete workflow engine where it has the connectors and the data words in the backend. And the AI builder, it it again uses the data words inside, uh, which which we, we don't need any connectors for this one as well. And the Power BI, uh, we we again we have to depend on the connectors here. Power virtual agents is also the same thing. We have to depend on the connectors. So uh, it allows you us to use our data in all ways. So what exactly the clients we have here, Power Apps, Portals, Flows, A Builder, Power BI, Virtual is everything. It allows us to use our data in all ways. Now, having said all these things, it is a kind of simple definition of what is Dataverse. Dataverse is easily structures a variety of data and business logic to support interconnected applications and process in a secure and compliant manner. So that's the one, one line of definition which we can give to Dataverse. Now let's see what, what exactly in the box. I, I'm pretty sure this particular is a screenshot or image we might have seen in the complete session. I, even, I was, I have, even I was attending a couple of sessions and everyone is doing the same session. It might be redundant discussion, but yeah, let me go through a little bit of in details what exactly they're inside of Dataverse. So Dataverse is nothing but the, it is an API, which is a applicant, uh, the, the, it is an, application programming interface, which has a lot of, lot of modules here, right? It, it can provide security, logic, data, storage, and integration. What exactly it can provide with respect to security? So security, it, it internally, it uses Azure Active Directory and access management mechanisms to help ensure that only authorized users can access the environments. So because of its Azure nature, it natively supports the encryption of the, the data that is being sent or stored inside the data. And it supports the authorization uh, at a raw field level and rich auditing capabilities. We all know uh, coming from the Dynamics 365 background, how Dynamics 365 really supports the raw level and field level security. We can always use the field security and we can always go with a uh, lot of security mechanisms in the system using security roles or maybe 
uh, hierarchical security or access team there are a lot of other concepts which you can use that's all about the security and coming to the logic so this is our piece right this is our, all all our consultants or maybe the developers piece dataverse allows us to easily apply business logic at the data level so like whatever may be the the data that user is interacting the same rules apply the rules could be it, it could be a plugin it could be a business rule or it could be a workflow or it could be a, it could be anything whatever we write right it is completely purely our particular portion where uh, the logic whatever we write it applies the, it the same rules could be applied from wherever the user is taking action the next one which we have is the data data is nothing but heart of a data works because it it so this is what it shows it it completely stores right so data the, uh, the data works offers the control to shape our data allowing us to discover model validate and report this control ensures our data looks the way uh, the way we want so whatever may be the the logic we use or how we wanted to present our data it's completely in our hands and it and also dataverse allows us to connect the data using power bi and once we have the data in the power bi and it's all about our creativity how like on, on like how we have to represent our data it's all about our creativity right so the, the storage so storage yeah it's all about the infrastructure and the scalability the dataverse database supports large data sets and the complex data models as well so tables that can hold millions of items and you can also extend the storage to each each instance of a microsoft dataverse i was reading one of the article and it can it can easily support 4 terabytes per instance that's a very huge data 4 tb is like so huge so huge data and the storage right the dataverse stores the all our physical data on the azure cloud and this cloud based storage removes the burden of worrying or like about where our data lives and how it scales as i mentioned this the, the service level agreement was 99.9% that is completely due to the, we are storing all our data microsoft is storing all the data on the azure cloud and the next one we have is the uh, the integration integration the uh the dataverse connects in the different ways to support your business needs right we do have apis we do have web hooks that exports and it gives the flexibility to get the data in as well as out so we do have lot of connectors lot of lot of like custom modules built on the on top of dataverse which we can uh we can uh, we can understand the logics we can understand the data here and obviously if you don't have the native connector the out of 475 connectors whatever that are coming from microsoft if you don't have those things we can always go with the custom connectors and if there is no out of the box yes that's a custom connector we can build and we can we can write our own logic on that and with the power automate workflow engine we can always auto uh, automate n number of things by making use of connectors and it it is the inside picture of the dataverse even though we 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 don't even know uh, we don't even understand all these things because they were they are the users of microsoft uh, dataverse here and the dynamic search tree application but internally all our data it is being it it is it is completely using azure infrastructure trust me dataverse is a largest customer for azure again even though it is internal it is for microsoft again uh, the again dataverse again pays some amount of money to the azure uh, 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 product and that's where it is it is being uh, measured as the largest customer of azure because it uses lot of components here now if you see in the picture it uses sql elastic tools it uses blobs it uses cosmos db it uses data like storage and we do have azure functions event hub service cups lot of things what not it it uses i would say microsoft dataverse touches i think everything everything in the azure like almost everything on that here and having said that thing uh, i am done with my kind of topic here and open to qa thank you so much gopinath uh, that was a really really some really good tips you shared there in relation to the data storage uh, that new feature as well for uh, exporting the logs i think is going to be very handy Um okay so let's take a look at the questions and answers. Um there are some questions um yeah. in the chat here. Let's start from the top. Okay. Okay, first question by Burami which is um what I found is file storage tends to be used a lot by system jobs. 
async and web resource base, for example, and it's creating capacity problems as they are generated by the system rather than users. Hmm. Uh, File storage used by system jobs. That's interesting. Do, would you agree with that statement? No, in reality, no, actually. Yeah, uh, I would have thought it's the database. Um, there's another question um, by Sh um, Sean Harvey. I've been dealing with that today. Oh, so Sean's also facing the same problem. Are you sure, guys, it's file storage you're having the problem with, or is it database storage? I think I think there's a confusion over which data. Uh, could you do me a favor, um, Gopinath? Could you share that slide with the data yeah. storage options? I think sure. there's some confusion um, in terms of the terminology people are using. I know you started off with terminology in your session so that we wouldn't mm -hmm. get confused. So I think that's really good. So I think there is confusion because there are three different storage types as you're all correct in saying guys, but I don't agree that it's the file storage that's being consumed here. I think it's the database storage. Here we go. So you've got, if we just go back. This is what we are looking. Yeah. Here we have. So yeah, the file storage is being used for the web for web resources, right? It's not being used for um, for the database logs. It's the database that's being used uh, for for those jobs, right? Uh, but but yeah, in, in short, just to be clear, it, it's not it's not the the um, the file storage that's being used for those jobs. Uh, unless someone can provide any evidence, but but I, but I myself and and you got Penneth, you you agree it's definitely not file storage that's being used for async jobs. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, Kumar is asking, now that the storage capacity is cheap, so file storage capacity, which refer to, yep, file storage is cheaper and it's easy to add in. Do we still want, ah, this is the, this is the golden question here, because what Kumar is asking is, do we still want to store data in Azure Blob or just use data store? Uh, the file storage uh, in the Dataverse. I know there used to be attachment management solution for Microsoft back in the day. So that's an interesting, interesting statement, uh, Gopinath. So now that that file storage is now gone cheaper than than it was before, um, people are saying now, well, should we still be throwing our files in there? Well, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, my thought, I, I would recommend to, to store everything in the file storage itself. So building a custom solution to move the files from the from the NST 65 to or maybe from Dataverse to the blob, and the attachment management solution, whatever that was given by MSFT Labs, even if if you go that link now, that has been deprecated. There is no support for that. Even Microsoft itself has called out saying that okay, you go with the out of the box. You don't need to build a custom solution. Custom solutions always come with the maintenance. Like if, if as the storage capacity for the files is just two dollars per GB per month, I would recommend to 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 stay as is to go with the out of the box. Okay, so Narang is asking, does this also affect performance? Um, what do you mean, um, Narang, by does this also affect performance? Do you know, um, Gopinath, what 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 Narang is referring to there? Uh, nothing in detail, but yeah, the, the performance is is nowhere related to the storage. Whatever we are discussing here, the, just the just the boxes which which is filled with the data and the, and the kind of files and everything. The performance is completely taken care by the Dataverse API management system, uh, which which we don't have any any intact with the storages here. Okay. But the, yes, the performance. If I want to cover uh, the previous question, if I link up, if you are using the custom solutions to move the files to from Dataverse to Blob using a attachment management solution or maybe using custom code. Yes, I'm pretty sure there might be the, the performance impact over there. Okay, so Kumar is asking, how can we optimize the storage consumption on the database level as well as table level? Is there any tools to do that? The estimation part, I just, I just shown you, right? The, the, there is a, uh, the nice uh, uh, like image, I think, let me please go back to that. Yeah, if you go to the instance here, the, the kind of the arrow mark here, it will show you this particular one. And here, if you click on this three line, you'll see something called download table. 
which will automatically show you this particular thing so which will help you to understand on which table has like how much sites here and the consumption wise obviously it's a business data until unless if you see any any uh, like your custom entity which is not used to buy business and if it is getting occupied like anything then you have to take an action but if the data consumption we have to understand from the business logic and how it is consumed here so bipin is asking if database capacity is exceeded integration which creates records in dynamic crm will they stop working no no like if if the you if you really if the database uh, capacity exceeds nothing will be stopped as i mentioned only these operations whatever i have shown you right creating uh, uh, instance or like uh, creating a new instance or maybe restoring a new instance all this will be stopped but not from the business point of view and uh, nothing will be stopped you can happily uh, still create the records in the system using integration or manually or maybe bulk import whatever you want the only thing is you might have to pay the amount when it comes to the uh, uh, when you are when you are renewing the licenses the system will ask you first to pay the to buy the storage and then move on to the license or when you are doing any of these operations like like creating a new instance altogether then again system will ask you to buy the storage and then move on okay So Jennifer's asking does getting rid of built-in tables um which we don't use for an environment save much capacity Uh actually I didn't get that question does getting rid of built-in tables ex- accounts which we don't if we don't use there is no there, there is no point of let uh, data anywhere right the size would be zero or maybe some one MB or two MB nothing more than that So until and unless if you have yeah. if you have the data in the table that will be counted if there is no data there is no point at all yeah so one of the, the interesting things you mentioned uh, in your session was about how microsoft builds its indexes right so right. if the data is not being populated in those tables the microsoft isn't going to index those tables right yeah. so um so in short the way the dataverse works is that it has built in um it has built in indexes so based on how we're consuming the data so if data isn't really being used um yeah then get rid of it if it's if it's not in there will it save much space um to be honest it probably won't save that much but you might as well get rid of it if it's not adding any value to your organization then why why does it stay, why is it in there uh, and in fact that raises another question actually another topic of debate which is what data should be held in the dataverse right that's another entirely new discussion um because some argue that some types of data does it need to always belong in the dataverse it can be exported out to the data lake um and i think that would have been a really good addition to this session if we also included something around data export service data lake and um and also how to optimize the the usage of the dataverse all that maybe customer centric information is stored in the dataverse but then other related data um that's probably only used for certain other scenarios or reporting or logs um can be be exported out and referenced externally or maybe using virtual entities there's little tips and tricks that you can use right but it's always something we should ask ourselves as a question but in short if there's a tables in there that have a few records here and there that's not really going to save you much space is it got enough correct yeah okay a uh, next question by hamid um around unknown users if the database capacity is exceeded or to the integration so nothing currently running will stop however you may notice that there will not be able to create a new environment or copy or restore environments while you over while you're over capacity so while you're over capacity as you mentioned gopinath you can't create new environments you can't restore environments because you are now gone over the line um it is not clear if there are any other things that may be happening like throttling okay um so some interesting comments there um mazar is asking it depends if you want to use those files to be accessed across enterprise uh, i'm not sure what that's in reference to um but eric has a question eric pelgrim is asking is there a technical limit of the storage in dataverse either for data or file uh technical limit i mean uh, as per my knowledge 
So it is like uh, four TB of size uh, capacity is still allowed. Uh, I think it would be for database, not for uh, I think file and uh, uh, log. I'm not really sure how much is the limit for the tech hard limit for the for those things. But yes, from the from the database point of view, yeah, four TB is the is the is the kind of like uh, we have uh, as per the Microsoft documentation. So four TB. So, sorry, is sorry what was what was that? Sorry, could you, you were unclear yeah. there, Gopinath? What did you say? Sorry. So uh, the, 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 the question is, is there a technical limit of the storage in the Dataverse, right? So for example, what kind of hard limit we have for the database or file or maybe the, the log, uh, like from Microsoft offering side. From Microsoft offering side, the hard limit, I, I would not say limit actually, we can always buy the storage up to 4 TB. TB, not GB. That's that's not the GB, key. Not, that's good. That's yeah. Key, terabytes, yeah. Yeah. It's a terabytes. Yeah, it's a terabytes. Yeah, it's a terabytes. Awesome. So we've got that so much, there for you. So much, yeah. Actually. Awesome. Yeah. So four terabytes, Eric. That's what you're looking at as a hard limit. To be honest, that's interesting. Uh, uh, obviously, if you're hitting four terabytes, that's crazy, right? I mean, who's going to be uh, having you know four terabytes is a lot, lot of data. I've never seen anything reach even one terabyte, but yeah, for customers, there may be some requirements and, and that capability is there for. Thanks for clarifying that, Gopinath. That's, that's good. Okay. Um, so there is a question by David is asking, is there a way to filter Dynamics data to gorged data size? I'm not sure what that question means, Gopinath, do you? Uh, you and I don't understand. Uh, maybe Dynamics data as in, is it something out of the box entity data are you talking about? I'm not sure what he's asking there, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, if you could uh, uh, um, provide more information, David, that'd be nice. Uh, Eduardo, remembering that you can connect your Power Apps file attachments to a SharePoint site OneDrive, which costs much better. So basically what Eduardo was saying is use SharePoint integration um, where you can, um, if you like. Uh, and again, that makes sense for data that doesn't need to belong in the dataverse, right? Um, so Mazar has a question. Will yeah. overnight backups still be taken if you exceed the database capacity? Yeah, the, the backups doesn't really depend on the database capacity. Backups is a separate mechanism altogether, which will be taken care by the by the backups, uh, uh, the backend jobs. So the capacity, like whatever the data we have, uh, even though if you are like over 50 GB or 100 GB, the backup still happens in the system because the backups happens on the instance level, not at the tenant level, right? Instance, whatever the instance they're carrying, that 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 burst of backups will happen over there. So the, the, there won't be any problem with that. Okay. Okay, so David's replied, if you have an, ov an overage, or an average, okay, let's say average. If you have an average use of data, who does Microsoft charge going over your limit? Uh, Microsoft charges that particular limit only at the time of renewal or maybe whenever you're doing these operations, whatever I'm showing on the screen. But till that point of time, you are free to use that. Okay. So Barami is asking, I can confirm it is file storage. Okay, so that whole debate around file storage and database storage. He's saying file storage, looking at the capacity right now in one of our environments, async operations and web resources are found in file usage rather than database usage. Could this be wrong from a reporting side? That's interesting. That's interesting because 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 to be honest, I think it's good. If, if asynchronous if asynchronous operations are being stored in your file storage, I think that's good because it's cheaper, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> although, yeah, but although I know that pre, pre, um, previously it wasn't in file storage, it was in it was in the database because that's where those database jobs live. Whereas the web resource base, um, as well. Um, you know, it makes sense, and it may be that Microsoft shifted them into file file usage because it's cheaper for the customer, um, and that's a good thing. If anything, it's a good thing. Although, from a technical perspective, I'm trying to make sense out of that because of the way the tables are structured and the data structures are designed uh, for a different purpose. But it actually works in your favor, Brahmi. If if that's the case. It works in your favor because now you're you're saving your actual database storage 
with only customer data now, not with system jobs. Would you agree, Gopinath? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so um, someone's asking, what is the maximum capacity of DB for a dataverse? You've answered that already, four terabytes, thank you. Uh, yeah. Vicenza is asking, in order to remain within that one GB storage capacity, in the Power Apps developer plan, we have necessarily work in dev or the default default environment. So basically, um, as you're all aware, you get a developer environment. In that developer, it's a free developer environment. In that, you get one gigabyte. And I think what Vincenzo is asking is, what can you do to keep within that one gigabyte? Um, I don't know if you've got any tips about that. No, enough. nothing. It, it just you. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all about how we use the applications, right? Like how we control the data, how we use that. If you are using, uh, like, it's all about how you consume the things here. So oh, based on that, the storage yeah. will automatically depend, right? Good it's question nothing. by Thomas. There's a very yeah. good question by Thomas. It is it is it possible to change the legacy, which is the previous capacity model, to the new one? Yeah, like nothing because from I, yeah. our side. We can't really do anything from our side. Like Microsoft has already taken a uh, note of that. Whenever you go for the renewal, whenever we change the licensing model, it will automatically apply. Okay. So um, Tohid is asking, will we have access? Okay. So we've already shared uh, that information, Tohid, um, uh, in relation to um, um, sh those who share the event will uh, the event links will get access. Um, we've been sharing that. Uh, those links throughout the event yesterday, today, and as well as in the emails provided. Um, okay, Bipin is asking the question, principal object access. Oh my word, Bipin, what have you done there? Okay, so he's asking the mm. principal object access table stored in which storage type? Um, no doubt, database. Yeah, spot on. So Bipin, I know it's an old school question and it used to be a problem back in the day. So when you ask that, anyone who asks any questions about princip principal object access, you know they're old school, isn't it, Gopi? They are old yep. school. So, um, so you're yep. old school there, Pin, because uh, you, you're working with the on-premise and and the and the and the challenges that the principal object access, which is related to security, uh, it used to be a problem back in the day, but that is stored in the dataverse, yeah, and it needs to be stored in there. From our best of knowledge, uh, Gopi's confirmed. Um, okay. So, um, Min Rao, Min Rao, hi Min Rao. Um, Async now writes both into database and file for performance improvements. Wow, so that's interesting. So, so what Min Rao is saying is that the asynchronous service writes into both the, the async jobs, the async jobs. So the async jobs that was asked initially as the initial question, that now writes into um, both the database and um, um, uh, the file story. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? Would you agree, Gopinath? Yeah. Yes, yes. That's a good thing for, for like, we, it always saves the cost for us, right? If async, uh, yeah. uh, like, uh, the async base table is moving to file, not automatically the cost is coming from $40 to $2, which is good for us. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, guys, what a great session. I have to say that this was, the sessions keep on getting better and better, right? So I have to say this was a really, really good session. Thank you so much, Gopinath, for, for sharing your insight today. It has been highly valuable. Some Lots of new things that have been taking place in the in the Capacity Admin Center. Um, Lots of good knowledge there. So thanks for sharing that. Thanks a lot for giving this opportunity and thanks everyone. Thank you. That was Gopinath. It was a great pleasure to have Gopinath here today sharing his insight. And there were some new nuggets of information.